with For the Love of Paper and Ink. I'm back to share with you how I make this little um, tract, contact card, and invitation to the Kingdom Hall holder. And I start with two-sided paper, uh, cardstock weight, and they're 12 by 12 papers. So that's what I start with. You want double sided because both side, at least for one of them, because the second back side is going to show up. So um, this paper here that doesn't have to be double sided, but the paper that you're using for the front side does need to be double sided. So I chose to use this one for my front cover on this one. So. I want that to be double sided so that it um, shows up but this paper does not have to be double sided so at least one of them does need to be double sided and then for the full piece you want to cut it down to be eight and a half by nine and three quarters and then you want to cut down a piece to be four and eight and three quarters and then just cut an angle um, as steep as you want or as little as you want this one ended up being a little bit steeper than I cut it originally but that's okay and then this piece you're gonna cut it at three and three quarters by nine and a half. So those are the three pieces you want for this journal. Actually, I cut that, yeah, nine and a half. It goes like this. That's how it's gonna be laying out. So then we're gonna take some laminating sheets. I just got this letter size laminating pouches at Walmart and I have not opened it yet so it still has some tape on it which I didn't realize otherwise I would have taken that tape off before I started the video and we're gonna grab out two pieces of laminating sheets And I have my laminator here next to me. That's what's making the squeaky noises. It's a little bit of an older laminator. And we're going to set these inside the laminating pouches. And I just go like so. Butt it up against the top. And even it on the sides. And then we're going to take these and we're going to do the same thing. And I'm going to get it as close to this edge that I, as I want it. And then we'll cut it on this side. And I do want to leave a little bit of a gap so that there's room for it to seal on each side. And then we'll bring in my laminated machine here and we'll feed it through. isn't it going it's not going and of course it's not working because we're on there it goes because <laughs> we're on camera and 
It's giving me troubles today. I just got this at the thrift store, so it's just an older one. Got it for five bucks. I should probably invest in a newer one. And since it's giving troubles, it's not laminating that great today. I'm going to run it back through just to make sure it seals good. Since it was a little funky there at the beginning. That's a little bit better. It resealed it a little bit better. But for some reason, it's just wanting to have troubles today. I haven't had that happen before. a new one. My $5 one from the thrift store has had its life. <laughs> So after you laminate them, then we're going to um, cut them out. We're going to cut off the excess edges and cut these ones out. And I don't know what happened to my scissors. Guess I'll use my little ones. So I'm just actually, let's use the paper trimmer. Sorry about my chair, guys. Try not to move it too much. Okay, nothing is working today. <laughs> so we're just going to use our scissors. cut but that's okay it's handmade imperfections are part of the deal and I don't like these to be super sharp edges so after we get them cut I'm going to take and use my quarter rounder and go around the edges 
and make them a little less sharp. So just leave a little bit of room around the edge so that it doesn't come unsealed. Toss your extra laminating stuff away. And then we have our insides. Then we're gonna go to the sewing machine. Actually, before we go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna score this one in half. this side because this is the side that I didn't cut actually let's just try and fold it in half give a little bit of a fold that's not working. Go ahead and score. I was just trying to cheat, not having to measure, but you need to score. Give it a good score because it's all thick. And I didn't score it straight. Okay, this is not going well today. See, this is... <laughs> what not to do. This will be my own. And this is going to be for me. So it doesn't matter that it's going to end up not looking right. But this is all the stuff that's what not to do. And then just burnish the edge. Tighten up the mark there, and you got your fold. And that's going to go on that side. Or if you want to reverse it, you can do it on that side too. But I want it on this side and this side. And actually, that might cover up my mistake better if I did this on this side and did this on this side. And here come the trains for today. So I think I'll do that, this on this side. And that's okay that the pockets are facing this way. So let's switch over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I sew it together. Okay, so we're back here at the sewing machine. And what I do is I just take um, this and we're going to sew it on on three sides and in the center. So first I just sew it on on three sides. So we're going to take it and we're going to butt it up against the back of the, the edge of the back here. And I actually Use some paper clips and clip it down. Actually, on this side. <laughs> Can't clip it down on that side. 
don't know what I was thinking. Okay. So, we get it as close to the edge as possible on the back side, and then we sew away. And I, since this is going to have a lot of in and out, I like to do a back stitch on it, and I'm just doing a straight stitch. So we're just stitching along the edge. And then lift up your foot and go down all the way down to the bottom and then lift your footer again and go across the bottom edge and then back stitch just to make sure you have it secure. And then we're going to take our scissors and trim. And I like to have, leave a little tails just for cuteness factor. And then what I did is I figured out where I wanted my seam to be by placing a card there to give room for a card and then I just and placing a thing here and I just did it in the middle of them so I'm going to add right here a seam to divide the two. Again, back stitch at the opening. You're going to get a lot of wear and tear, pulling stuff in and out. And just go across, back stitch, and voila, you got your first side done for your cards. And your invitations and then we're gonna put this side on I'm not sure if I want to do it this way or this way since it is double-sided I could have two different patterns but I really liked this side guess I'll leave it this way so this way we're just gonna center it on like we did last time and I'll just tape it right, paper clip it right there and take it off when we get down here because we're going to sew around all three sides. And we're going to bring it right to the edge just like we did the last time. And then we're going to start up here, sew around, back stitch. Paper clip off, lift your footer, turn it, lift your footer and turn again, and back stitch, and there you go. Leave your little tails if you like. I like the rustic look of leaving the tails. If you don't like it, cut your tails all the way off. And then a uh, track can be stuck in here. Now, if you decide you want to have them on this side, you can do, and this side, you can cut your. Um, angle to be the opposite direction 
because I think the angle look works better when it's open towards the edge. But since I messed up and I put my angle up that way, but um, I, I think the angle works best if it's towards the edge. So whatever side you put your pocket on for your tracks, cut the angle so it's going out towards the edge, not towards the inside of the pocket. But since I messed up on my fold and switched my thing around, my pocket is on the inside. And then you just stuff your tracks in. Looks like I did my pocket a little too tight. So make sure you are going as close to the edge as you can. I went in a little far on my sewing on there. I did it a little bit looser on this one. Here comes another train. It's a little easier when you have more than one track too. But that's how you make the little track holders. And you could decorate it up on the front if you wanted. But I think they're cute just how they are. And I like to, um, to help them stay closed, just pop a paper clip on them. They're great for your purse. They're great for um, your book bag. Um, so that's how you make those. They make great gifts for those in your congregation. So have fun making those. And let me know what you guys think of them. So have a great day. Bye.